Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can change the colour of your Python programs. So this will work in either Windows or Linux. You can change the text colour, you can change the background colours and also later on in the program I'll show you how you can actually change the colours of components of your ASCII art files if you've got ASCII art. Okay, so let's get going. What we'll do first of all is we'll create ourselves a new Python file and let's just do an example. Let's say here we've got a hello world, as we always do. Let's save that. File, save as, and let's call this demo1.py. Leave that as a Python file. There we go. So we've got pretty standard there, hello world. And if we go to the console, and if we run it in the console, Python demo1.py, it says hello world. So let's imagine we want to change the hello to red and the world to blue. How could we do it? Well, the first thing we do is we need to go onto Google and we Google ANSI colors, just like that, and it will bring up this list of colors. And what we do is we find the code for red, which is that one, paste that before the start of the hello, because that's where we want it to change to red. Then we go back to our code and we paste the blue code, which is where we want it to change to blue. And we paste that below the world, uh, before the world. There we go. And then finally, we got red, blue, and then at the end of our program, we'll change the text color back to white. So there we go. Let's paste that there. And now if we save that and run it in Windows, then it will not work. Let's have a look. There you go. You can see it here. It's just printing out the codes in some kind of garbled manner. Uh, there's a bit of a bug on Windows with the shell, and the only way to make it work, the colors in Windows, is if you import OS, and at the start of the program, do an os.systemcls to clear the screen. I don't know what it does, but for some reason, when you do that, it makes it work. So now if we go back to here, there we go, and run it again, there you go, it now works. So we've got red, and we've, we've got blue. Brilliant. Good. So there's the first part, how to change the text color. And let me just give you an example here of how to change the background. If you want to change the background, you need to click on the link here uh, and go down to the section where it says background colors. Uh, this uh, How Yee's site has got all the colors there. So let's say we want a background of a green. We'll just select the green background there. And we'll do right at the start, we'll change the background to green by adding the code there. And then if we go to uh, the end of it, after we've done all the code, we'll change the background black back to black. Just like we did with the colors of the text. We'll put that right at the end. There we go. Save that. And now if we go here and run that, there you go. It works. So you've got background colors and you've got text colors. But there is a bit of an issue here. If you go here, um, that there is pretty much unreadable. It's in fact, it's pretty much entirely unreadable. I have no idea what it's saying and I have no idea what any of the colors are. So ideally, what we want here is a system where instead of that, we just tell it inside of our little tech, inside of our strings, what colors we want each section to be. And we can use that by using, uh, creating a little function that makes life a bit easier. But first of all, let me give you a demonstration. Let's say I want it to start off red, hello, and then we'll change it to blue. And then world. There we go. And then at the very end, we'll change it back to white. There you go. So I've sort of invented a little bit of a, a kind of a color language here inside of the square brackets, which is good. So there's that's um, there's our. In fact, let's get rid of the string. Let's call that our text. What we want to print out. Uh, in fact, we'll call it hello. Let's call it hello. So that's what we want to print out. Our little hello world. 
but we want it substituted with all the correct codes. So in order to do that, we need to create ourselves a function and we need to have a dictionary of all of the uh, codes. Now, I'm not going to type out all the codes by hand uh, because it would take me about three, four minutes to type them out. But um, here's one I made earlier. So there is my dictionary of the codes. Let me just show you how they look. So we have a dictionary called colors here at the start of the dictionary here. We've got black. Um, so that's our first key. And there, so the key is the name of the color. And then the value inside of there is the actual ANSI code that it's going to be substituted. Now, you can add as many as you like. I've only done about 10 there, uh, just to give you some examples and some backgrounds. You can add as many as you need into that in your program. But then what we need to do is we need to create ourselves a little function that colorizes the text. So let's create a function called, uh, let's call it color text. It's going to color the text in. And the color text function takes uh, an argument of text because we're going to give it some text that we want it to swap. And this, uh, the function actually is really, really easy. What we do is we go through each color in the colors dictionary above there. So we go through each of these colors and we try and match it with one of these little here where we've got the our little template bits because these are the bits we want to swap so and it's going to look like this we say okay text equals text dot replace and then we're going to replace anything that looks like double bracket and then the name of the color that it's going through at that point in time so it'll start on black and then go red green all the way through um, there we go and if it finds that color what we're going to do is we're going to replace that little bit of a template with the actual ANSI code. So now if we go here and we go to colors and we say, okay, go and get that correct color that we've just matched. There, go through all of those colors. Once you've checked all of the colors to see if there's any that need replacing, then simply return the text. That's a nice, simple function. There's our original text. And if we were to print the original text, if we just print hello, the hello text, save that. And now if we run it, it just says hello, hello, all those things there. But now if we go, okay, print brackets, color text, brackets, hello. So before we print, we put it into the color text function inside of there. And now... If we save that, there you go. So we've got the best of both worlds there now. We've got text that is easy to read, a templating system that's easy to read. And we've uh, it's also, you know, doesn't take a lot of code. Again, I'll put the code for all of this in the link to the description. And what I would advise you is to sort of retype this, uh, these bits here, so you get um, you understand it better if you type through. But you could just cut and paste it if you want. Uh, all we're missing now is how do we how do we change our ASCII art colours? So here's my ASCII art. I've got some uh, uh, some lettering followed by the Python logo followed by some more lettering. How have I done that? Well, the original source file here is looks just like that. There's a standard bit of ASCII art. Um, you can generate this text here. Uh, you can generate your own text by using a, a text to ASCII art generator. Uh, here's one online. I'll put the link to that. Um, so you create yourself some ASCII art and save it to a text file. But then what you need to do is you need to convert it. Well, you need to use the same systems before with all these red and the blue in the double brackets. And you just do that in your actual ASCII art file. There you can see I've changed it green. Each line, that's that green all the way down to there. Then I want it to blue. I don't know why I've done it blue, don't need all of those blues. Uh, but there's where it changes and you can have a mess around with it. Um, and it works for the backgrounds as well. You can see there I've done the background color, change it back to black. And once you've done all that, all you need to do is you load your text file into your, um, into your program and then just run it through the color text function. So let me show you how that works. So first thing we do is we open the text file that we wanted, which is Python logo 
2.txt. And we open it as uh, an R for read in read mode. And then what we need to do is we need to convert the um, we need to convert all the contents into one long string ready to feed into that text bit there. So what we'll do here is we'll do uh, ASCII equals and then we do this lovely bit of code, which I'll show you in a second. I'll tell you what how that works. F dot read lines. There we go. OK, so what it does is it reads the file, reads all of the lines from the file. But there's a problem because when you use F dot read lines, it reads it into a list, which we don't want. We want it to be one non string. So what we need to do is we use the Python join uh, join method there and we just join all the bits of those lists together with an empty string. So now what it's done is here it'll have read all of that ASCII file into one long string that look a bit like that but it'll be super super long and then we could just do the same as before print color text there we go and then we're just going to print the ASCII there there we go we'll save that just to show you that it is working I'm going to change that to red we'll do a red logo at the top let's see if that works and now if we go back to the console and if we run our demo1.py there you go it's changed the color of the ASCII art so there it is there's a nice simple way I'll just pull that on large a nice simple short bit of code that doesn't rely on any external modules and it works both in Windows and in Linux. Uh, I hope you liked the tutorial. If there's any questions, just pop a comment in. If you do like it, please like the video. And if you uh, want to subscribe to my channel for more videos, please do. Thank you very much.